God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Their voice has gone out to the limits of the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Alleluia. The heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the firmament shows forth the work of his hands. Day unto day takes up the story, and night unto night makes known the message. No speech, no word, no voice is heard, yet their span extends through all the earth their words to the utmost bounds of the world. There he has placed a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom coming from his tent, rejoices like a champion to run its course. At the end of the sky is the rising of the sun. To the furthest end of the sky is its course. There is nothing concealed from its burning heat. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Their voice has gone out to, to the, the limits, limits of, of the earth, earth their, their words to the ends of the world. Alleluia. They proclaimed what God has done for us. They grasped the meaning of his deeds. Alleluia. Hear my voice, O God, as I complain. Guard my life from dread of the foe. Hide me from the band of the wicked, from the throng of those who do evil. They sharpen their tongues like swords. They aim bitter words like arrows to shoot at the innocent from ambush, shooting suddenly and recklessly. They scheme their evil course, they conspire to lay secret snares. They say, who will see us? Who can search out our crimes? He will search who searches the mind and knows the depths of the heart. God has shot them with his arrow and dealt them sudden wounds. Their own tongue has brought them to ruin and all who see them mock. Then will all men fear. They will tell what God has done. They will understand God's deeds. The just will rejoice in the Lord and fly to him for refuge. All the upright hearts will glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. They proclaimed what, what God, God has, has done, done for us. They, they grasped, grasped the meaning of his deeds. Alleluia. God's holiness was revealed by them. All nations saw God's glory. Alleluia. The Lord is King. Let earth rejoice. Let all the coastlands be glad. 
Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right. A fire prepares his path, it burns up his foes on every side. His lightnings light up the world, the earth trembles at the sight. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice, all peoples see his glory. Let those who serve idols be ashamed, those who boast of their worthless gods. All you spirits worship him. Zion hears and is glad. The people of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the souls of his saints. He sets them free from the wicked. Light shines forth for the just and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just, in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God's holiness was revealed by them. All, All nations, nations saw, saw God's, God's glory. glory. Alleluia. They proclaim the Lord's praises, told of his power to save, Alleluia. And of the wonders he had worked, Alleluia. From the Acts of the Apostles. Through the hands of the Apostles, many signs and wonders occurred among the people. By mutual agreement, they used to meet in Solomon's portico. No one else dared to join them, despite the fact that the people held them in great esteem. Nevertheless, more and more believers, men and women in great numbers, were continually added to the Lord. The people carried the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mattresses, so that when Peter passed by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. Crowds from the towns around Jerusalem would gather, too, bringing their sick and those who were troubled by unclean spirits, all of whom were cured. The high priest and all his supporters, that is, the party of the Sadducees, filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and threw them into the public jail. During the night, however, an angel of the Lord opened the gates of the jail, led them forth, and said, Go out now, and take your place in the temple precincts, and preach to the people all about this new life. Accordingly, they went into the temple at dawn, and resumed their teaching. When the high priest and his supporters arrived, they convoked the Sanhedrin, the full council of the elders of Israel. They sent word to the jail that the prisoners were to be brought in. But when the temple guard got to the jail, they could not find them, and hurried back with the report. We found the jail securely locked, and the guards at their posts outside the gates. But when we opened it, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the high priests did not know what to make of the affair. Someone then came up to them, pointing out, Look there! Those men you put in jail are standing over there in the temple, teaching the people. At that, the captain went off with the guard and brought them in, but without any show of force, for fear of being stoned by the crowd. When they had led them in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest began the interrogation in this way. 
We gave you strict orders not to teach about that name, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us responsible for that man's blood. To this, Peter and all the apostles replied, Better for us to obey God than men. The God of our fathers has raised up Jesus, whom you put to death, hanging him on a tree. He whom God has exalted at his right hand as ruler and savior is to bring repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. We testify to this. So too does the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those that obey him. With great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of Jesus. All of them were held in great favor. Alleluia. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke God's word with boldness. All of them were held in great favor. Alleluia. From a homily on the Acts of the Apostles by St. John Chrysostom, Bishop. In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, As the fiery spirit to whom the flock was entrusted by Christ, and as the leader in the band of the apostles, Peter always took the initiative in speaking. My brothers, we must choose from among our number. He left the decision to the whole body, at once augmenting the honor of those elected and avoiding any suspicion of partiality, for such great occasions can easily lead to trouble. Did not Peter then have the right to make the choice himself? Certainly he had the right, but he did not want to give the appearance of showing special favor to anyone. Besides, he was not yet endowed with the Spirit. And they nominated two, we read, Joseph, who was called Barsabbas and surnamed Justus, and Matthias. He himself did not nominate them. All present did. But it was he who brought the issue forward, pointing out that it was not his own idea, but had been suggested to him by a scriptural prophecy. So he was speaking, not as a teacher, but as an interpreter. So, he goes on, we must choose from those men who lived in our company. Notice how insistent he is that they should be eyewitnesses. Even though the Spirit would come to ratify the choice, Peter regards this prior qualification as most important. Those who lived in our company, to continue the passage, all through the time when the Lord Jesus came and went among us, he refers to those who had dwelt with Jesus, not just those who had been his disciples. For, of course, from the very beginning, many had followed him. Notice how it is written that Peter himself was one of the two who had listened to John and then followed Jesus. All through the time when the Lord Jesus came and went among us, to continue further, beginning with the baptism of John, Rightly so, because no one knew what had happened before that time, although they were to know of it later through the Spirit. Up to the day, Peter added, on which he was taken up from us. One of these must be made a witness along with us of his resurrection. He did not say a witness of the rest of his actions, but only a witness of the resurrection that witness would be more believable who could declare that he who ate and drank and was crucified also rose from the dead. He needed to be a witness, not of the times before or after that event, and not of the signs and wonders, but only of the resurrection itself. For the rest happened by general admission, openly, but the resurrection took place secretly, and was known to these men only. And they all prayed together, saying, You, Lord, know the hearts of men. Make your choice known to us. 
you, not we. Appropriately, they said, that he knew the hearts of men, because the choice was to be made by him, not by others. They spoke with such confidence because someone had to be appointed. They did not say choose, but make known to us the chosen one, the one you choose, they said, fully aware that everything was preordained by God. Then they drew lots, for they did not think themselves worthy to make the choice of their own accord, and therefore they wanted some sign for their instruction. Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show us the one whom you have chosen to assume this ministry and apostleship. Alleluia. They cast lots, and the choice fell upon Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Show us the one whom you have chosen to assume this ministry and apostleship. Alleluia. You are God, we praise you. You, you are, are the Lord, Lord we, acclaim we acclaim you. You, you are, are the, the Eternal Father, Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Father, you called St. Matthias to share in the mission of the apostles. By the help of his prayers, may we receive with joy the love you share with us and be counted among those you have chosen. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.